Let me ask you a question. Is there any giants in your life today? Any difficulties, any situations or circumstances that seem almost impossible to defeat? Well, I've got good news for you today. There is a God that we serve that is bigger and greater than any giant in your life. And that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm Scott Jansen. This is Westeros Gospel Church and Lineheart Ministries. And this message is called Killing Goliath. All right, today I'm talking about killing Goliath. And what I mean by that is how to defeat the giants in your life. Now, let me ask you a question. Have you ever met Goliath? What I mean by that is Goliath is this big giant of an obstacle that seems unbeatable, impossible to defeat. Maybe it's a difficulty that is, you know, in your life right now that is so great that has you entertaining the thought that you just want to give up. You want to throw in the towel. And maybe you've met him in the past. Maybe you've gone through something that's been really difficult. Or maybe this Goliath is troubling you even right now. We've all been there. And whatever your Goliath that you're facing right now, we know the Goliath can be defeated. And that's what I want to talk about today. Because Goliath's purpose is really to destroy you. If you look at the story, that's exactly what Goliath's intent was. And we know that the enemy wants to use the Goliath in your life to destroy you. But God has a purpose for the Goliath in your life. Did you know that? God has a purpose for that. Whatever that mountain is or Goliath is, he has a purpose for it and it's for you to defeat it. Amen. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. And, you know, it doesn't really matter what it is. It's a, it's a situation. It might be um, bitterness or unforgiveness or sin or it, it could be um, illness. It could be anything, fear, anxiety, whatever it is that, that this Goliath is in your life or has been or will be. The truth is. Jesus has already defeated Goliath. So I'm giving you kind of the ending already. But now I want to kind of go into it. Because God calls us to be strong. Strong in the Lord. And to acknowledge that the battle belongs to the Lord. Not to just us. Amen. And we are to experience his victory. And the resources that he's given for us to be victorious. And so, really, when we look at this, the fight that we have with Goliath, whatever it might be, we face it in the power of the Holy Spirit, and we become victorious over it. And so, I want to encourage you to confront that Goliath in your life today, to deal with that enemy that is robbing you of joy, that's robbing you of happiness, joy, uh, fulfillment, any of those things. Because the enemy doesn't play fair, but God is victorious. And so what I want to do is I want to look at that story, David and Goliath. And the story really speaks for itself. But I want to examine it and see how you can apply it to your life. And so I want you to, when you're hearing the story being read, Imagine the Goliath in your life. Whatever difficulties in your life, whatever problems in your life, I want you to picture that the Goliath in the story is that very thing in your life. Amen? So let's read. And um, I'm going to start here in verse 4. 1 Samuel 17 and it really, it has all the clues that we need to confront and overcome Goliath in our life. And it says, Then Goliath, a Philistine champion from Gath, came out of the Philistine ranks to face the forces of Israel. He was over nine feet tall. 
That's big. In fact, in historical documents, they believe that Goliath was about nine foot six. If you can believe that, that's amazing. He would definitely make the NBA. And he wore a bronze helmet and his bronze coat of mail weighed 125 pounds. He also wore bronze leg armor and he carried a bronze javelin on his shoulder. The shaft on his spear was as heavy and thick as a weaver's beam, tipped with an iron spearhead that weighed 15 pounds. Just the spearhead. Wow. This is no small enemy. Okay, that, let's just put that out there in those first few scriptures. This is a giant that terrified people. Not only because of his appearance, but because of his reputation. Because Goliath was a champion warrior. And so Goliath is not just, oh, he's just another one of those really big guys from Gath. No, he is a champion. He instilled fear into people. What about the Goliath in your life? Does it seem as intimidating as him? Because remember, the Israelites, they are, they are really scared of this guy. Everybody is. What about that thing in your life? Are you scared of it? Is it making you cower like, like Goliath did to those people? It says next, his armor bearer walked ahead of him carrying a shield. And Goliath stood and shouted a taunt across to the Israelites. Why are you all coming out to this fight? Why are you all coming out to fight, he called. I am a Philistine champion. But you are only servants of Saul. So you'll notice that Goliath stands and shouts and he taunts. What does that remind you of? It reminds you of the enemy, the devil, doesn't it? He stands, he shouts, and he taunts. And this is what the enemy does to us through the giants that are in our life. Through the Goliath that's in your life. He tries to discourage you. He tries to put fear in you and hopefully make you give up and run. That's the purpose, the enemy's purpose for Goliath. And his next statement that Goliath makes reveals his nature. He asks, he asks them, why are you coming out to fight? I'm the champion. But who are you? Who are you? You see, when Goliath attacks, he attacks with words, with doubt, with fear, just like the enemy. The enemy doesn't have authority to physically attack you unless you give him authority, right? So in this case, the enemy loves to cause you to question your identity. Who are you? He's saying, who are you? This is exactly what the enemy does. He questions who you are and he questions your identity. If you know who you are in Christ, you will be victorious. Amen. And you won't need to be afraid of any Goliath that comes into your life. Because you will know who you are in Christ. You will know that greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. And then the scripture going back, it says, Choose one man to come down here and fight me. If he kills me, then we will be your slaves. But if I kill him, you will be our slaves. I defy the armies of Israel today. Send me a man who will fight me. When Saul and the Israelites heard this, they were terrified and deeply shaken. You know, there is truth in what Goliath speaks. Truth in what he speaks here about slavery. If I defeat you, you're going to be a slave. If you defeat me, we're going to be a slave. In fact, Paul talks about this. And he talks about the slave, the slave, slavery of sin and the sinful nature. And that might be a Goliath in your life. It might be your sinful nature. It might be the battles that are going on in your mind and in your heart. And I want to read it to you out of Romans chapter 6, 16 to 23. It says, don't you realize that you become a slave of whoever you choose to obey? It's a choice. 
You could be a slave to sin, which leads to death, or you could choose to obey God, which leads to righteous living. Then he says, thank God. Once you were slaves to sin, but now you wholeheartedly obey this teaching you have been given. Now you are free from your slavery to sin, and you have become slaves to righteous living. Verse 19. Because of the weakness of your human nature, I am using the illustration of slavery to help you understand this. Previously, you let yourselves be slaves to impurity and lawlessness, which all led to deeper, deeper into sin. Now, you must give yourselves wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly, to be slaves of righteous living so that you will become holy. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the obligation to do what is right. And what was the result? You're now ashamed of the things that you used to do, things that ended in eternal doom. But now you are free from the power of sin and have become slaves of God. Now you do those things that lead to holiness and result in eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. That's the plan for Goliath in your life, is that you would be a slave to him. That you would be a slave to the situation that's in your life. Now I don't know what your situation is. But that thing that's in your life, that circumstance, it might be in the past. It might be happening right now. It might be something that's going to happen. But whatever that thing is, the plan, the enemy's plan behind it is that that thing will crush you. That that thing will hold you back. Maybe it's somebody you haven't forgiven. I don't know what it is. But whatever it might be, the enemy wants to use that thing to destroy you. But the beautiful thing is, is Jesus, and this is, here's the secret, guys, and it's not even a secret. Jesus already defeated Goliath. That's a good place to say amen. I'll say it for you. So, you can be a slave to Goliath, the very thing in your life, and allow these circumstances to defeat you and to discourage you, or you can stand up, and say what Paul says in Galatians 5.1, which is my favorite scripture in the whole Bible. It says, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand then as free people and do not, and do not be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Amen. In other words, Jesus has paid such a great high price for your freedom that you never have to be a slave to anything but Christ ever again. Amen. No sin, no fear, no bitterness, no shame, no guilt. Nothing. So how does this all take place? Well, in, uh, Paul says it a few verses later in the same chapter, in Galatians 5, 24 to 25, he says, those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their, of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. And since we are living by the Spirit, let us also follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. So Paul says, if you belong to Jesus, you got to nail those desires, those passions to the cross. But his very next statement is, we are living by the Spirit. What does that show me? It reveals that we part, we we uh, play a part in killing Goliath in our life. We play a part. But it is never in our own power. It is by the power of the Holy Spirit. Romans 8, 12 to 13. I know this might sound like a sidetrack to that story, but it's all wraps up into this. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. No obligation. For if you live by its dictates, you will die. But, but, but if through the power of the Holy Spirit, you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. Amen. God will fight for you. 
Holy Spirit will fight for you. You play a part like David plays a part. But the greatest thing about this is we can rest in the finished work of Jesus. Okay, let's go back to the story. Verse 22. David left his things with the keeper of supplies and hurried out to the ranks to greet his brothers. And as he was talking with them, Goliath, the Philistine champion from Gath, came out from the Philistine ranks. Then David heard him shout his usual taunt to the army of Israel. As soon as the Israel, Israelite army saw him, they began to run away in fright. Have you seen the giant? The man asked. He comes out each day to defy Israel. The king has offered a huge reward to anyone who kills him. He will give that man one of his daughters for a wife, and the man's entire family will be exempted from paying taxes. So you can see how the Israelites are responding here. In fear. They're in terror. Nobody, even if they get a wife and no taxes out of the deal, no one's willing to take that chance because they know there's a 99% chance they're going to die anyways. So why take the chance, right? So they're, they're looking at themselves and then they're looking at Goliath and it causes them to be intimidated. David asks uh, the soldiers standing nearby, he says, what will a man get for killing this Philistine and ending the defiance of Israel? Who is this pagan Philistine anyway that he is allowed to defy the armies of the living God? David doesn't even know who this guy is. Everyone else seems to know him. And these men gave David the same reply. Yes, that, that's the reward for killing him. But when David's oldest brother, Eliab, heard David was talking with them, he was angry. What are you doing around here anyway? What about all those few sheep you're supposed to be taking care of? I know about your pride and deceit. You just want to see the battle. So you see what his brother is saying? He's basically saying, why are you here? You're just a kid. You have no business being here. Your place is out babysitting the sheep. This is for men. This this kind of stuff. I want you to listen to me here. Be careful who you listen to in your life. I really need that to sink in because when you face your Goliath in your life, whatever situation you're going through, some people are, are going to discourage you to face him. They may tell you to run away. They may tell you some unwise advice. Why do they do that? Because they themselves haven't confronted their Goliath. Amen. The best thing you can do is listen and get advice from those who have already killed giants in their life. And the greatest person is Jesus. But surround yourself with people in your life who are giant killers. Amen. Let's go back. Verse 29. What have I done now? David replied. I was only asking a question. Sounds like typical brothers, right? And he walked over to some others and asked them the same thing and he received the same answer. Then David's question was reported to King Saul and the king sent for him. Don't worry about this Philistine. David told Saul. David told that to the king. Now, don't worry about this guy. Huh, he's nothing. I'll go fight him. <laughs> and it says, Saul's reply was, don't be ridiculous. Saul replied, there's no way you can fight this Philistine and possibly win. You're only a boy. And, and he's been a man of war since youth. So remember, Goliath is, is a trained warrior that's been doing this since he was just a young boy. He's been trained. He is like a fifth degree black belt in killing people. <laughs> he is he, he's a real warrior. And David is just this young boy that carries around a stick, you know, to smack the sheep every once in a while when they won't listen. So obviously you could tell why maybe the king is acting like this. But you, could you hear the words of doubt and fear again? You're only a boy. And, and the king is comparing David to Goliath in their natural abilities. And, the, and his natural reaction is, there's no way that you can win 
But David was seeing things differently. And that's the key here. But David persisted. I've been taking care of my father's sheep and goats. <laughs> you know, that's not a winning argument, by the way. <laughs> he said, when a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club and rescue the lamb from its mouth. And if the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and I club it to death. Now, honestly, that's actually pretty impressive. And then he says, I have done this to both lions and bears. And I'll do it to this pagan Philistine too. For he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me. Listen to this. Listen to David's confession. The Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from this Philistine. Wow. That is the power of confession. Amen? Some people might think David is either foolish or just full of pride. But there is something else to the story. David was big when compared to Goliath. Absolutely. But David was smart enough, and I want you to really hear this right now. David was smart enough to not compare himself to the giant, but rather to God, not himself. He was seeing the battle as Goliath versus God, not Goliath versus David. And I wonder if we could do the same thing. Why don't we do the same thing here? When Goliath comes your way, don't compare him with you and your history and your strength and your abilities and your past and all the mistakes that you've made. Compare Goliath to the living God that you serve. Amen? Remember the story of Moses in Exodus 17? Moses commanded Joshua to fight against the army of Amalek, okay? And as long as Moses held up his hand, right, held his, held his arms up, the Israelites had the advantage. But when he dropped them, the advantage went to the Amalekites. And eventually Aaron and Hur found, found a stone for him to, to sit on, and, and, and they helped by lifting up Moses' hands, they, they would go on either side of him and lift up the, uh, their, his hands. So, you know, it, honestly, it doesn't matter the size of the army or the size of the giant that you are facing. God can fight for you and cause you to walk in victory. It's not about the size of the giant. It's not about the size of the situation. It's about the size of the God that you serve. Fall, uh, Saul finally consented. All right, go ahead. He said, and may the Lord be with you. <laughs> and Saul gave David his own armor, a bronze helmet and a coat of mail. David put it on, strapped the sword over it, and took a step or two to see what it was like, for he had never worn such things before. I can't go in these, he protested to Saul. I'm not used to them. So David took them off again. And he picked up sm five smooth stones from, from a, a stream and put them in his shepherd's bag. And then armed only with a shepherd's staff and sling, he started across the valley to fight the Philistine. Goliath walked out toward David with his shield bearer ahead of him, sneering in contempt at this ruddy-faced boy. Am I a dog? He roared at David, that you come to me with a stick? And he cursed David by the names of his gods. Come over here and I'll give your flesh to the birds and wild animals, Goliath yelled. So this is a kind of a uh, humorous picture to imagine because David is going out to meet Goliath and he's being suited up and he can't even walk because it probably weighs more than he does. Uh, if you could imagine him in this big suit of armor and he just falls over. He says, get this thing off of me. I can't, I can't fight like this. You know, the weight of the armor, like I said, probably weighed more than he did. And his trust wasn't in physical armor. It wasn't in the weapons. It was in the spiritual armor that God was equipping him with. So David replied to the Philistine. And oh boy, this is, get, this is getting good now. I want you to hear this. 
I know you've all heard this story before a hundred times, but maybe you'll see it differently today because this Goliath in your life is about to fall. Amen. It says this. This is what we need to say. David replied to the Philistine, you come to me with sword, spear, and javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of the armies of Israel whom you have defied. Today the Lord will conquer you. Today, maybe you could do this with me right now. Repeat after me. Repeat these words after me. And I want you to think about that Goliath in your life right now when you say this. Say this out loud with me. Today, the Lord will conquer you. And I will kill you and cut off your head. Amen. Confess that. And then I will give the dead bodies of your men and the birds and wild animals. And the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. And everyone assembled there will know that the Lord rescues his people. But not with sword and spear. This is the Lord's battle and he will give you to us. Wow. Wow. Love that statement. You come to me with the sword. You come to me with spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies. David's confidence was not in himself. It was in God. He knew that God would deliver him. And you can see the confidence in his words. Today the Lord will conquer you. And as Goliath moved closer to attack, David quickly ran out to meet him, reaching to his shepherd's bag and taking out a stone. He hurled at it, hurled it with a sling and hit the Philistine in the forehead. The stone sank in and Goliath stumbled and fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone, for he had no sword. Then David ran over and pulled Goliath's sword from its sheath. And David used it to kill him and cut off his head. Wow, what a story. He used the enemy's own weapon against him. So in all of this stuff today that I've mentioned, and I'm coming to a conclusion, a close here, I want you to remember something, that Jesus is your giant killer. You are not David so much in the story, Jesus is. Jesus went out and faced Goliath for you. He already killed the giant in your life. He kills the Goliath in your life. You work with him. And I and I just encourage you to that that very Goliath that's in your life that's standing in front of you and and, and threatening you and saying these words to you, that you can turn back to that Goliath and say, you know what, I'm not going to be intimidated by you because you carry these weapons and because you're nine foot six giant and because you have a reputation of being the champion because you're not facing me. Sorry, you thought, Goliath, you thought you were fighting me? Oh, I'm sorry, no. You're fighting my father. You're fighting my dad. And my dad's a big guy. His name is God. And he's going to destroy you. But here's the thing, actually. He already did destroy you. He defeated you on the cross. You were defeated. And I am victorious in the name of Jesus. Amen? Let's close in prayer together. Lord, I pray right now for every person watching that's facing a Goliath in their life, myself included. Father, I pray that they would rest in your finished work that you accomplished on the cross and that you would defeat every enemy in their life 
no matter how big that Goliath is, whether it's in the past, whether it's right now or in the future, I thank you, Jesus, that you were a giant killer and you have destroyed this Goliath. You have destroyed sin, death, and the grave, and you have given us the victory. And we thank you, Jesus, that we are victorious because of you. And we can rest in you today as victorious in Jesus' mighty name. And if you agree, you can say, Amen. God bless you as you go and watch your giant killed. Amen.